Hey everybody, I'm Logan Alec. I'm a CPA. I own Choice Tax Relief. Uh, we help folks with their tax problems. Um, today's question uh, is from Dr. Drizzy13, who has a question about the CP523 notice. The CP523 notice is the notice that the IRS sends you when it believes that you have uh, met a default condition on your installment agreement with them. And the CP523 is therefore notifying you of the IRS's intent uh, to terminate your installment agreement if you do not cure that default condition within the time period stated in the notice. And so at Dr. Drizzy 13, let me just read it. Is the CP523 notice of intent the last letter I get before levy or garnishment, right? So bank levy IRS comes in, freezes your bank account for 21 days. If you don't get it resolved, take some money out of the account, right? Whatever was in the account, when the levy was served. Garnishment, wage garnishment. IRS takes some money, a lot of money, sometimes most of the money, out of your paycheck every time you get paid. It stinks. So he's this uh, Dr. Drew is asking, I was wondering if the CP523 letter is the last letter I will get before they put a levy or lien on my assets or will I receive more correspondence? The letter says notice of intent. I was reading that I should get a letter that says final notice of intent, which is accurate. So basically what, what Dr. Drizzy is asking is, hey, if I don't meet the deadline and I'm going to pull up a, a sample CP523 here to, to show you what he's talking about. So he's basically asking, look, right, and this this isn't Dr. Drizzy. This is one of one of our uh, clients, right, who the, you know, who uh, didn't pay the additional tax was that was owed on their, their new tax return, right? Because part of the, the deal with an installment agreement Right, with the IRS or really any real resolution with the IRS is, yeah, they, they might cut you a, a deal on, you know, what you owe right now, your back taxes, right? Whether it's an offer and compromise or whatever, right? Or in this case, an installment agreement lets you pay over time rather than all at once. But part of the deal is you got to pay um, additional taxes, right? When they're due. You got to be a good taxpayer from now on. It's it's in the letter you get. Let me show you. You know, when you get into an installment agreement, you get this letter that, that tells you the conditions of the agreement, right? The terms and everything, right? And one of the conditions is you must pay all federal taxes that become due during the term of this agreement, right? So in the case of this taxpayer, uh, they filed, I believe this was their uh, 2022 tax return. Uh, they owed like 2100 bucks according to their 2022 tax return. Um, they had to pay that, right? Or they would default their installment agreement for the years before 2022, right? And so what Dr. Drizzy is asking is, hey, look, um, let's say I can't afford to pay what I owe the IRS, right, according to the CP 523. And the deadline goes by, 30 days go by, right? And the IRS uh, at that point terminates the installment agreement. What happens then? Can the IRS then immediately start levying you, take, taking your... Uh, levying your bank account, garnishing your wages, or is there another notice that the IRS has to send you before it does that? The answer, believe it or not, is in the CP 523 itself. Uh, it's it's this section, yeah, uh, this section right here. Okay, let me let me zoom in here for you, uh, for your viewing pleasure. Um, <clears throat> notice of intent to levy. Okay, this is your notice of intent to levy. Blah blah blah. Okay. After we terminate your installment agreement, okay, and you've exhausted your appeal rights, okay, because you can do it, you can do a, ta a cap appeal, right, uh, to appeal, and I've, I've talked about it in other videos, um, to appeal an installment agreement termination. The, ugh, I hate Adobe. I gotta go to um, preview. But let's say you don't do anything, right? Thirty days go by, you don't appeal. IRS terminates your installment agreement, okay. If, if the IRS, they, they're saying this right here, they're explaining, they're giving the answer. We can levy, seize property, rights of property if we have previously sent you a collection due process notice, okay, CDP notice, offering you a hearing with the IRS uh, Independent Office of Appeals, okay? So that's what that's saying. So if you received a notice, like an LT11, say, if you're an ACS, or uh, a letter 1058, if you were with a revenue officer at the time, um, informing you of your rights to a collection due process hearing, a CDP hearing, which is a statutorily required notice the IRS must send you before it can levy your bank account, 
garnish your wages in most cases. There's jeopardy cases where that may or may not be the case, but in most cases, that's the case, okay? So if you got that notice, right, that gave you your CDP rights, then yes, after the IRS terminates this installment agreement, Dr. Drizzle, it can go after um, your, uh, uh, it can garnish, send, send, a, send a garnishment notice to your employer, send a levy notice to your bank account, and really make life really nasty for you. You might say, oh, gee, I don't, I don't know. I got all that IRS mail years ago. Um, how, how am I supposed to know if, um, you, you know, they sent me the CDP notice, right? Well, it would, it probably would have come in certified mail, right? Cause that's a statutory requirement. Another thing you can do is look at your account transcripts for those years. Cause it'll tell you on there. Let, let me pull one up. Right. So, so here's an account transcript, right? You can see on here. Uh, that code 971, right? Issue notice of lien filing and right to collection due process hearing, right? So they can do it uh, when they they'll, they'll, they give you CDP rights when they file a lien. And this taxpayer, right? Uh, he got it. He got another collection due process notice, right? On the file on the file notice of intent to levy, right? So if you see this code 971, right? Um, with the when and you see you know right to collection due process hearing, okay? You know collection due process notice of intent to levy. That means that the IRS um, has previously given you um, your CDP rights, at least with respect uh, to, to the text, your, uh, the account transcript at which you're looking. Um, and so you would fall in this category in the CP 523, right? Uh, where the IRS says we can levy or seize your property or rights to property if we have previously sent you a collection due process notice, right? Um, so going back to, you know, Dr. Drizzy's question here, if that's the case, if you see that in your account transcript or you have that old notice and you can see that the IRS gave you CDP rights, um, you know, it will say file notice of intent to levy uh, and, you know, notice of your right to a hearing, right, at the top. Um, LT11, letter 1058, those are the common notices that give these things. There's other ones too, like the, you know, the um, the CP91, if they're going to garnish, you know, Social Security, stuff like that. There's other ones too, but basically you got to look at it, at the notice and see if it's giving you, informing you of how to request a CDP hearing, a collection due process hearing. Okay, or you can just look at your account transcript, right? But, but so Dr. Drizzy, I mean, if that's the case, then yes, the CP523 notice will be the last notice in all likelihood that the IRS is going to send you before they, they levy you or uh, your bank account, garnish your wages, take other nasty collection activity against you, right? If not, if the IRS has not sent you that CDP notice before, uh, let's go back to the CP 523 because it describes what happens there. If we haven't sent you a CP, CDP notice, okay, then the IRS has much more limited uh, uh, levy uh, rights here, right? They can take your state income tax refund. Okay. Uh, and there's some more, there's like unique cases, like a disqualified employment tax levy, uh, a federal contractor levy, but there's only very specific types um, of, of things that they can take if they sent you the notice of intent to levy, but they haven't given you your CDP right yet. Right. Or they've sent you uh, their notice of intent uh, to terminate your installment agreement, which serves as a notice of intent to levy, right? But they haven't given you your CDP rights yet, okay? The stuff down here on the notice, this stuff, they can only start taking this stuff, levy this stuff, okay? If they have properly given you your CDP rights, okay? Um, that's the answer, Dr. Grizzy, okay? Um, if this is confusing, I know this can sound confusing, CD, because there's all these interrelated con concepts here, right? There's the CDP hearing and the notice of the CDP hearing. And, you know, did you get that notice before? It can be confusing. I know. That's why we have a whole, you know, business choice tax relief navigating this stuff for our clients and figuring out the best way forward. If you'd like to talk to us at Choice Tax Relief, give us a call, 866-8000-TAX. That's 866-8000-829. You can also... Uh, Click the button that's going to pop up around here somewhere. Take it to our homepage. Fill out the form. Check out my other tax relief videos here on the left-hand side of your screen. I'll see you in the next video, folks. Bye-bye.